In this demo, we're going to clean up and add some polish to our prototype. The first thing that we are going to change is the color of this number as the slider goes past the current temperature. It doesn't look very polished that this is orange while this remains red. So I'm going to change that to red. Another piece of polish is these two buttons right here are a little bit too thin. So I'm going to make those a little bit thicker. This flame icon feels a little bit big up here. So let's change that as well. And also the alignment and the weight of living room feels like it could be improved. And the last thing that we will add is that energy animation that will show up from the current temperature to the top of our slider. So in order to change the color of this number, uh, based off of the behavior of our slider, we're simply going to use the range triggers that we've already set up in the previous video. So we can go ahead and uh, select our number, which is temperature, and let's add a new behavior for our trigger, which is color. And what we want to have happen is, in this case, the color of the slider turned from orange to a red color, Let's just copy that red color and uh, use the same thing for our temperature. Okay, so let's give that a try. Okay, now we see that both of them are changing, but when we drag it back down, we need to tell ProtoPy to also change the color of our temperature as well. So in that case, I'm just going to copy this behavior right here. There we go. And uh, we're going to say we want it, this is, this is the color for the slider, so let's copy that hex value, and let's use the same thing for our text. All right, so if we drag it above the current temperature, it turns red, drag it below, it goes back to orange, just like we wanted. The next thing that we're going to change is the width of these buttons right here. They just feel a little bit too thin. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, um, find those elements inside of my uh, layers palette over here. I have them under a container called box elements. And then there's button plus where there's line one and two. That makes up the lines of the plus symbol. So I'll go to line two and I want the width of that to be two. But before I do that, let me, let me reverse that. Okay, before I do that, I actually want the origin to be in the center because I want it to expand from the center uh, and, not, and that way it will maintain the correct proportions. So let's change that to uh, width of two. All right, let's now go to line one, do the same thing, let's change our origin and let's make that width also two. Okay. That starts to feel a little bit better. Let's do the same thing with button minus. So I labeled that line two, and we will change that origin to the middle, change the width to two. Okay, so that looks a little bit better. It's a little bit easier to read. This flame here also feels like it's just a little bit too big. I think it, it doesn't need to be so big. Uh, one thing about thermostat modes is that you don't change them very often. So let's go ahead and, and change that width to um, what it is currently to 26. Okay, And uh, let's just make sure that it's aligned the way we want it from the edge. So let's move it 16 points over. One, that's, uh, that's shift arrow to get 10 pixels over. And then one, two, three, four, five, six. That feels about right. The next thing that we'll look at is the title. And I like to position my title according to standard iOS guidelines. And so I'm going to go to Google Images and find a reference so that I can position this how I want. So I'm going to search for iOS iPhone 10 navbar. and search for the images. 
and it looks like there's a reference right here that I can use. So I'll just drag that onto my desktop, and then I'll take that same image, drag it over into my project, and let's expand this to be roughly the same size as my project. Okay. There we go. Okay, so now I'm going to just drag this layer below my uh, box elements. So now I can see living room, which I currently have labeled text one in my layers palette. So let me change that to living room. And let's move that down. Let's make it uh, semi-bold. And it looks like the font is about right. So now that I have that where I want it, I can remove that image. And that feels good. Now my icon over here feels a little bit too high. So let me click on that in the Layers palette and just bump that down until it feels about right. Okay, good. Now the last thing to do on this prototype is add that energy pulsing animation on top of the slider. Once the slider is dragged past this indicator. So let's create an, a container. Make that container as large as the space where that pulsing animation will exist. It will only exist above this point. So that's how big it will be. I'm going to label this box energy. And let's create an energy shape. Let's make it white. And let's make drag that to fill the space of the box. It also needs to be 30% opacity. And let's label it energy. And drag that into box energy. Now, <clears throat> in order to have this pulsing, uh, I am simply going to alternate between changing the opacity to 0 and 30. And I want this to just happen all the time, because it's not going to be revealed until the slider reaches above a certain point. So I'm going to add a trigger that will be based off of starting this scene. Once this scene loads, it's going to start animating. So let's add a new trigger, start trigger. I usually drag my start triggers to the top. And let's add an opacity behavior for energy that energy layer that's just the white box. And we want it to uh, change its opacity uh, to, it's, it's currently at 30, so let's change that opacity to um, 0. And I want that duration to be uh, 1 second long. And I want it to delay by uh, 0 seconds. I don't want any delay on it, but I do want the repeat to be 2.5 seconds. So that means that every 2.5 seconds it's going to animate from 30 to 0. And I just want this to repeat indefinitely. The next behavior that we need to add is another opacity to change that energy layer from 0 to 30. And I want that to also have a duration of 1 second but I want the delay to be 2.5 seconds. So that means that this will start 2.5 seconds after it faded to zero. And I also want this to repeat indefinitely, and I want that to also repeat every 2.5 seconds infinitely. So we check that box right there. So let's preview, see how that looks. So you can see it just subtly pulsing so that's looking good. Now, there's a few problems here. Uh, one is that this is pulsing over all of the elements on top. We don't want that, so we want to mask that out. Also, when it 
uh, when I am trying to do anything above this point, I can't click anywhere. I can't tap anywhere. And that's because our box energy is covering anything that would be tappable. So let's add a mask and um, also make it so that we can tap things so that, it, that, so that this layer can actually ignore taps so we can tap things beneath it. So let's go to our box energy and add a new shape. This is a rectangle and this we're going to call it mask energy. And I'm going to drag it below our energy layer. I'm going to drag that about to the height of the box slider. And let's make that about that size there. This one, we don't care about the color because it's going to be a mask. So let's make that fill zero. And let's also click this option to use as mask. Okay, the other thing we want to do is click on our box energy and select this option, make lower layers touchable. Great. Now if we preview, we can see that we can move this up and down and we can we can also tap in this area, anywhere in the box energy area. However, we're not seeing our animation anymore. And that's because our mask starts right here, in, uh, aligned with the currently 70 degrees um, indicator. And uh, the actual animation starts above that place. So the thing that we want to change is to have that mask follow the height of our box slider. And so we can actually do that with chaining. Let's go to our chain trigger that we already have. We created this in order to move the mask of our um, white tick marks. And we're going to do that same exact techniques, but just for the mask of um, the energy layer. So I'm going to, in this case, I, I, I want the ranges to be the same. So I'm just going to copy and paste this behavior but instead of mask, I want it to be mask energy. So let's try that out. Good. So now what we see is that mask is following the height of our slider. And we can click in this area, or, or excuse me, tap in this area just fine. And it looks like everything's working as intended. And that's it for this series.